Whoa. 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 Well, well, well. 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 So, anyway. Are you, um, those headphones on your left there, uh, oh. Seth, as well, if you want to hear that. It might be a little loud, so if you need okay. to turn it down. Copy that. It'll take a second. So, anyway. <laughs> so, as I was saying. <laughs> we're in balls. Oh, well, I do have <laughs> I'm at the Blushing Mermaid. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome we'll, we'll back. Finish that later, right? we'll finish that later. <laughs> Welcome back to another thrilling episode of Venture Friends, the talk back show <laughs> featuring our friends from the wickedly successful podcast <laughs> Venture Fort D D.com slash Venture Fort D. We're here with Kellick and Oma, <laughs> aka Shane and Rebecca. Mm. Hi everybody. How are you? Hello. You Hello. sound like Mickey. Oh, Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Hello. I'm technically in the public domain. <laughs> this is all fair. Everything's okay. This is fair usage. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. I'm canon. <laughs> <laughs> He's canon. <laughs> How's it going, guys? It's, hey, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. So this good. Thursday yes. evening. Yeah. This Happy wonderful Thursday. Thursday it's, evening. It's free and, this, and this Friday fun. Eve. Yes. Uh. Mickey Priya, we are so excited to have you join. If you want to drop a question in chat, please feel free to do so. I will kick us off, though. Okay. With a question from our Discord, uh, nice. from Faye. Oh, we so, love Faye. We adore Faye. A little bit of a primer for this, for those of us who haven't joined us before. This is a question where we get to ask the players of Venture Forth anything and everything that you want to ask about the game, about the like podcast itself, about making it, about everything in between. So our first question comes from Faye in the Discord. What do y'all consider the defining moments of your character as people prior to or during the events of the show? And then the same question, but with the dynamic between your two characters. <laughs> um, I So this is a question, I think there are lots of moments prior but I think it's more fun if I talk about moments on the show. Yeah. Right? Defining moments. I think the most recent, I think this is like a defining moment like every episode basically, because like Kellick is constantly learning and growing as we all are. But I think the most recent example is uh, the tavern in Sunplume after the giant fight. Mm. Uh, mm. When I met, I think his name's Tobin, who, because I was just like, I need to buy healer's kits because I'm <laughs> fresh out <laughs> since the Underdark and you know, we're definitely going to need them soon. Uh, and the, the boy, did we actually? Now that I think about it. Uh, 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 but uh, but so I went to get them, and then uh, Seth, just because he's such a freaking insanely good DM, like just unraveled a scene, uh, like a, a makeshift hospital scene mm-hmm. in the uh, uh, inn, and mm-hmm. Kellick uh, had a moment to uh, treat some injured an, an injured woman, and it was very it was very moving for me personally for personal reasons, uh, but it also was a moment for Kellick because he had just learned from Artemisia mm-hmm. that the gods are maybe not really like as all powerful and all knowing as he, he formerly believed, but it was a moment of how much does that matter if I can still make an, an individual difference, a difference in this one person's life with the power that's been given to me. Um, and so it was a nice, it was, a, it was an important moment for Kellick in terms of like his mm-hmm. whole world will be shaken just like a moment prior. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Olma, like many children, is like still, it's gonna take her some time to process all the things that are happening to, to learn and grow from them. You know, like most adults who are still processing their mm-hmm. childhood trauma. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I think it's gonna take a little bit of time for her to really like understand the importance of what's happening right now in her life. Um, that being said, some of the moments that have really impacted her, I think were ones where she got to take, an, uh, take a super active role in the next steps. So like saving Xavier from the prison, like but, like, but that entire arc, not just saving him from the prison, but like kind of garnering the trust of her whole team to like mm. pull a team mm. along with her as she did something that basically only helped her. Um, so I think like really like having a team behind her support her 
mm. was was a was a was a novel experience. I remember that discussion. It was right after the like bit with Seeker we did to get the necklaces to hide us. Yeah, and like we were like, oh, we know Xavier's being kept in a prison, and like Kelly and Flynn had an exchange that was like, well, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That just makes sense. Yeah, like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to leave uh, my friend in jail. So like, let's, yeah, let's it was do a really it. special yeah. moment. And then for us together, like I think Kalik and Alma have had some really lovely, lovely oh, moments. Yeah. Um, uh, the, yeah. the first one that springs to mind is after Alma killed the guy in the in the prison. Yeah, and, and she rides on your horse and she has a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's then, like early. That's like fifty minus episodes. Like. It's like in the first it's twenty like something thir- episodes, thirty something. Yeah, I think it's episode thirty six. Yeah, thirty six. Yeah, yeah. That it's tracks. very early. That tracks. Yeah, because yeah, like that. Yeah, because Alma kills a guy because she's so frustrated that uh, that Xavier has been yeah. uh, taken away once more. She's just lost March. March just left. March so she's just in left. This, like, yeah. Tailspin. And I think it was like the moment that like Kellex, like Kellex became a sort of paternal figure to Alma mm-hmm. because up until then it had been like there's this frustrating woman and this weird child that I am trying <laughs> you know like, it's I'm like so sorry. those are those two, yeah, those are <laughs> two people <laughs> and uh and and then it was like the woman's gone and she literally like, like marched the child. asked <laughs> Kelly like one of the she was like take care of Olma right. and Kelly was like I promise and yeah. Kelly is like religious about his promises um and uh uh so it was like I guess I have to it's a real uh, Obi-Wan situation <laughs> It is interesting to have that Obi-Wan situation because there there is a lot more of, I don't know, like familiarity with that too. Like mm-hmm. I, I am constantly reminded of like, oh, when Olma puts up her hood and goes invisible, she grabs on to the cloak because you yeah, are. Yeah, those are my favorite moments. Yeah. I really love those. Um, yeah. It's become, I don't even know like the first episode it happened in. It's like in, the de facto or the but it is. response it's, to it's, it. Yeah. it. And it stemmed from like, she's wearing an invisibility cloak so she's actually yeah. invisible so it kind of stems from like oh in in game how do i make sure that like people know where i am mm. and they don't think like i'm just like wandering off in the mm. middle of nowhere mm. so so the cloak became kind of like a oh a, a very like practical thing but for for game mechanics but also <laughs> it's a very sweet thing because it's like almost it, the the kind of like because she doesn't always do it when she's invisible now it's also mm-hmm. like a comfort thing it's also like mm-hmm. a hey like i am doing this thing Let's do it together. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, it feels like a, a security thing, too. Yeah. It's like, Kellogg will protect me. Like, yeah. I, like whatever happens, like, we, we're in this together, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes, it's it's fun for Kellogg, uh, uh, fun being a very loosely defined, mm-hmm. but uh, the Kellogg's backstory uh, with regard to the temple and the remembrance is like, I have a very distinct uh, moment in his memory where he turned a father with a sick daughter away from the temple because they couldn't answer the questions of the remembrance and so it is this like thing of like he has this like core wound of that and it's like almost this opportunity in a way to like try and make up for it you know Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. all these people he kind of screwed well i first want to say hello to sort of ambiguous fables d20 and sea cow welcome to the street sea cow (laughs) sorry to give you a special Uh, shout out she's nice to see you (laughs) and also hello to Mickey and Love, who has our first question from the audience. I think I know <laughs> who that is as well. Uh, I think I know who that is too. <laughs> Amazing. I hope you're feeling okay. Mickey. I know you're oh. not feeling so great. <laughs> hey, we hope you're feeling better. Yeah, thanks for tuning uh, in. How did you both build your characters? Where did you start in the character creation process? Hmm. Yeah, well, so uh, mine is very specific. Like, okay. Oma is a very specific, like, how she began. Mm-hmm. And I distinctly remember it because Shane and I were playing in a game, just a casual game with friends. Mm-hmm. Nobody on the podcast was in this casual That's game. Right. Like, it was yeah. a totally separate yeah. game. Yeah, I about this. And I made a very risky choice of in my character and I ba- and then we ended the session and I was like I basically spent the entire next she was so mad I was so mad <laughs> but I spent the entire next um like in between sessions panicking being like I'm going to die I'm I'm, ge- I'm definitely going to die like this is there's no way I'm going to survive this let me build a backup character and I started like playing around with a backup character and that became like Oma 1.0 <laughs> like that became like wow, the initial that backup, character, yeah. that backup yeah. character that I never ended up using for that campaign um but that backup character ended up being like the bones of Olma and then over the next like two years to two and a half years she slowly like built out and built out and built out until she became what she is on the show wow Shane 
Uh, man, who? So I knew, was so the beginning of the podcast was me grabbing Ethan and going, I want to do a podcast, right? <laughs> That's how it started. And he literally, it was at my birthday party and he like jumped up and down with excitement. Yeah. Uh, and I'll never forget it. Uh, and I, for some reason, I had it in my head. January that, 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah. January 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> Little did we know. Little did we know. But I, uh, I literally, uh, I thought, oh, this is how noble of a person I am, is I <laughs> so was noble. like, I'm just so noble. I was like, I know that whoever we recruit to be on this thing will probably not want to play a cleric. Like, clerics are like the unsexy class, yeah. so mm-hmm. I will bear the burden of playing a cleric. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm much more of a rogue boy in terms of my, like, that's what I always go to when I play any video game or anything. But so I, I went with cleric. Uh, and that was the beginning of the thing. And then once Ethan was like, okay, the world is set in the midst of this like religious war. I was like, well, I want him to be in the middle of that. <laughs> like, mm. like physically and metaphysically, emotionally. Like, so he's like torn between these two things. Like I wanted to start in a place of conflict with him. Um, literally as well. I didn't, that was not my, my intention, but that's where Ethan put mm-hmm. me. Um, and so that's sort of like where the foundation began as I was like, what if I do this like, and I wanted the half drow thing was kind of a fun element of it where I was like, what if he's a, a like a zealot about the like God of light, but he's like an underdark like uh, person. And yeah, just that kind of the, those, those things. I just, I always want to play tension. So that's where, that's where I began. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of going off of that, uh, another question from the audience from mm. Fables D20. What was your goal with the characters? Any specific themes? If so, how have those goals shifted from the start to now? What's it kind of like being a meta storyteller? <laughs> wow. Mm. Mm. Uh, so to reframe the question, are goals? there any goals that I had for my character uh, that have changed over time mm-hmm. or that have come to fruition? Yeah. Man, I, I feel like I black out when I start improving. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I, I have seen I have seen what happens to your eyes. Like the light sort of goes out because then Oma emerges. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I do feel like I black out when I improv. Um, <laughs> sorry, everybody at my table. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's Oma though. It really is. It cannot be denied. Um, so like. I mean, loose goals, like finding her parents was a goal, right? Like finding Alma's parents was a goal that I had kind of for her. I didn't know what was going to become of them. I didn't know that they were not going to, spoilers, be there, exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when that, like, I feel like that, I I felt really um, honored that Ethan put what he did into that Mm. kind of send off for them and send off for Alma's like, that really felt like a button and a cap on that. So mm. uh, on that whole goal of like finding her parents, and I and I really appreciate um, the generosity he came to that moment with, mm. and the, the generosity that the entire table came to the came to it with. Um, so I am super appreciative of that, and and grateful that we have it caught on camera because it just so happened to line. That up was like when we started, when we started shooting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that's that's kind of that. Those are my feelings, at least, is that that was the goal: is find the parents. I found them, mm-hmm. um, and I'm grateful for how it happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Kellogg's goal was to figure out what happened to Famir uh, and to save Famir. That was one of the first things I wrote. Like, I I built Kellogg. I wrote an adjective star, which is mm-hmm. a very silly acting exercise that sort of like <laughs> does like broad strokes of a character's like dichotomies. Uh, and then I uh, uh, started to write like, what are his goals? And one of them was save Famir. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, he knew because of the war that she was in peril in some capacity. Mm-hmm. And so, and that has more or less stayed, stayed, even though it's like taken all these different transmutations uh, that is a big thing. Um, mm-hmm. As far as being like a meta uh, storyteller, um, it's very complicated. One of the things, like what the first thing that came to mind when that was when when that word emerged was I think uh, we had a comment a while ago about we we have this right, like running gag about Kelly's knees because he's got like joint pain because <laughs> he's like because he's like a, a a tired fellow like that was sort of like where it started and yeah. then like you, when when we switch bodies you like really put a point on it and then Seeker has never let it go. Yeah, um, I feel like, did you even mention your knees before? I don't know. I don't, I feel like 
I feel like you'd never mentioned your knees. And it's then possible. I, and then we switched bodies. I don't I was know like, where it began. Why did my knees hurt? No, that's literally where it began. Is I switched into your bodies. I woke up. I got up from laying down. And I was like, my it knees It totally hurt. tracked, though. It made sense for, for Kelly to have that kind of issue. And then, like, eventually, like, we had some responses to it where people were like, I really appreciate this. Like, like they felt seen by, like, this is a person with, like, a, a very, very minor disability, but like a, a what's it called? A, a, a cron... A chronic pain. Chronic like pain. Chronic, chronic pain. pain, right? And I like, I like, it like blew my mind because I had not thought it. I was like, this is like a silly joke or yeah. this is like a part of Kelly's character in, in a deep way, but it's also just something we're kind of like memeing about. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I had never considered how little things like that could affect mm. yeah. the, the audience and like that it means a lot to me that that is the case and I always like hope we honor that mm -hmm. that's the that is the, as a meta storyteller mm -hmm. it is very it is kind of a burden in that way because uh, I just want to always do right by yeah. those people so that's one that's something that I'm always thinking about yeah and that is also an almost like a Rebecca blacking out moment because I don't know where that, like, I just was like, my knees hurt. <laughs> and, and and where it came from for me was like, oh, this idea of like, okay, well, Oma is a monk and she's a child. So she's mm. probably incredibly flexible mm -hmm. and also right. like very limber. Like she doesn't feel pain in her what body. Would so like, like what would it be like 45? to suddenly be 45? <laughs> and also like, like an old 45. <laughs> he's <laughs> old in only some way. But in all, he's like, quite young for body, a half no, no, Sure, but his body Secret. has, in the point that his body has like taken a beating. You yes. know, he was yeah. in the war. He was like in the... In the he's worn in the, out. Yeah, yeah, he's worn out. His yeah, body's yeah. worn out. So I think that was like a, in the moment of improv being like, oh, how would this immediately be a different feeling in your body? And let me pick one thing to mm -hmm. say. And it just mm -hmm. happened to become knees. And... Now we're here. And now we're here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it just goes to show you that, like, like in real life, mm -hmm. many heroes aren't in the prime or ready yeah. for heroic deeds when they do them. But yeah. They choose to do it anyway. Right. True. Um, yeah, speaking of that, uh, it's been two years since you created your characters. It's crazy. Did uh, Kelly Almost get... three. Almost we're on our three year anniversary <sighs> in well, March. Crap. Sea Cow <laughs> is asking this question, by the way. Uh, did Kellick and Olma turn out as you planned? How is it different from what you had planned all those years ago? Yeah, God, not, 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 I think in some ways, but in, so, in a but lot of ways, in a lot of ways, no. Um, I think I imagined him way more traditionally badass. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, yeah, I, I was like, I was like, maybe he'll be like super mad about how Famir abandoned him and he'll go around like killing clerics of Famir. Like that'll be his thing. Like I was like, yeah. I had like thoughts of that of like, maybe that's where it'll go. Um, but it, but it's always, uh, but because of just like how things, cause like I, I always say uh, when people ask for advice on like building characters yeah. and stuff like that, I would say, remember that when you start, everything can go out the window. Like the yeah. whole character you've built, you can be like, this is, a, this is a thing my character, this is the hill my character lives and dies on. And then if that becomes like the pivotal point in the story that everyone's mm -hmm. telling together, then you gotta check that and now you can do something yeah. else, you know, so yeah. I, I would say, yeah, almost probably pretty much <laughs> how, how I intended her to be. <laughs> she might be a little bit more aggro than uh -huh. I intended, <laughs> but I'm a very aggro person. So Facts. I feel like um, that just might be a little bit of myself in there and sorry, not sorry. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite bits, spoilers for episode 133, was the just, and I know this look in you because you've done this in real life too, where you're just like, I want to see what's on that desk. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone would be like, no! <laughs> just like a perfect, just a perfect moment of a child just being like, I want to know about this guy. I, I want to know. <laughs> I don't trust anyone. I don't yeah. see any reason I shouldn't explore yeah. this. <laughs> and again, leaning into things that you didn't plan for, 13 passive perception. Yeah. <laughs> or passive insight or whatever, yeah, whatever yeah, that yeah. was. So you can't, yeah. you can just Seth not asking you anything. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Um, and speaking of Seth, uh, who is graciously uh, behind the camera today running everything, thank you, Seth. Thanks, Seth. Get yourself a DM who does it all. <laughs> Get yourself a DM who does it all. Uh, another question from Mickey Ann Love. How much of your backstory did you leave up to your DM? And how much did you plan? Specifically, uh, Alma with her magic and her family, and mm -hmm. Kelly with his gods and their turmoil. Mm. I planned all the wild magic. Like I planned that I was going to be a wild magic sorcerer. I planned that I was going to have a monk background. I planned how, why I left the monastery 
and those things and and like meeting Xavier and meeting March um but that's pretty much where it ended so anything that like Olma didn't know starting mm -hmm. I let Ethan plan mm -hmm. um I I know where her mat I knew where her magic came from initially like I, I guess that is one thing that like Alma didn't know that I knew but the mm. only thing that I knew that my character didn't know was like that my magic was from a god but that was Ethan's decision right the source of Alma's magic um or was that your call it was my call oh. it was my call the source of the magic Ooh. but um the way it was done like the whole ceremony like the the way like the uh -huh. way the red wolf stuff the, yeah all of that was not part of my like I didn't have any of that and and I also didn't have any of the like her dad having clerics do it do it to her yeah. in in my um original rendition of it it was just kind of like it wasn't like alexandra wasn't even the first one to have it it, right. start, it was like it was, past, a, legacy. It was a legacy yeah. that she got so it's like he made it more um active than i had had it mine was a little bit more passive like mm. and who knows how far back mm. it had started right and so he he kind of like took that and was like well let's make it more um tied to the story which i love yeah yeah. But I didn't plan like what happened to her parents or or Alexandra or how old they could get. Like I didn't plan any of that. So mm -hmm. I wrote most of I think what there is to know about Famir. Yeah. <laughs> like I I like Ethan gave me the broad strokes and then I have a document in my uh, in my uh, Google Drive that's just like I call it, it's called the Famir Bible and it's just like a bunch of stuff I wrote to just kind of like try and like anchor myself in the in the um, ideology and to, and to build my I remember the thinking of like oh I have license to do this I'm gonna build a god that I would like to worship like I'm gonna build a god that is like a, not so uh, uh, punishing <laughs> you know and, and does kind of holds the beliefs that I think are kind yeah. of sacred yeah. So, um, uh, uh, same thing with Zachary a little bit. I did a lot of writing on Zachary. Ethan's a great, he was a great partner because he's, he's very good at like taking what you throw at him and running with it. And also like whenever you have an idea, he would always mm -hmm. be like, yeah, let's do that. Like, let's put yeah. that in. Like it was so easy. Cause I, I'm also a player who has a lot of ideas and suggestions yeah. and like what an amazing, uh, thing to, to be able to have that. collaboration. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, Seth also has those qualities. <laughs> so it's, yeah, we He's can get fortunate that way. Really lucky. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, and speaking of luck and chatting, uh, Priya, your questions are not irrelevant at all. Feel free to drop one in chat right now. We'll be yeah. sure to ask you. Yeah, Basically anything They, they asked something table. in the Discord, too. So I think that's what they were mentioning. Oh, Priya? I think Marissa did. Mm, I have the question wonder, from Priasaurus if, if you want, want to read that. It yeah. makes yeah. me wonder how irrelevant my Discord questions are. Oh, okay. I didn't see them. Yeah. Sorry. No, she dropped them in the thread. So, uh, what? God, I, Mike. Uh, What's our God's name? To, hey. Um, God? <laughs> we, <laughs> we will go to, uh, to yeah, Priya's first question. So, for both Shane and Rebecca, I've played in D&D groups almost exclusively alongside my partner and it can be interesting question mark does this have any interesting stories to tell about this or do you have any interesting stories to share about this dynamic or intentional boundaries to reduce conflict is it hard to share your partner with this group and fans or mostly gratifying to see their awesomeness appreciated oh Ooh. that's such a fun question thanks for asking yeah. that yeah yeah I think most people do know that we Shane and I are married what <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I have to bring in the comedian. You may as well. You may as well. I, it's right yeah, there. I think, um, but we are also like not playing romantic interests in, yeah. our, in the podcast. Yeah, I'm like right playing your father figure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sharing totally. It's fine. I love. I love that that um, that you've got a romance going with Thessaly. I think it's like really charming. I love. I'm ex I If you've seen any of the episodes, you see my like joy mm. in watching the love between Thessaly and Kalik as characters. Um, I don't feel like any weirdness about that at all. Basically, <laughs> um, and mainly, I mean, Devin is such an incredible friend of ours too right. so it's like i don't feel any kind there, of there, there is, is no an insane amount of trust <laughs> yeah. in our in our in our circle. table yeah. in our circle yeah. yeah so so definitely like no no issues with like i love sharing him with everybody and their love um i think the hardest thing for us was honestly um sometimes shane will dm and i'll play and i can be very mean 
<laughs> I'm a mean person sometimes. I think opinionated might be a little no, bit I'm mean. To me? Shane, I'm mean. It's me. <laughs> and and it's because we've been together for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And I and like when when he Shane always gives me my way. So when he does right, it when we're DMing. Right. It can be very hard to DM for Rebecca because hard. yeah, because I'm a very accommodating partner. But as a DM, you gotta draw harder lines. Yes. You gotta have firmer boundaries. And so Rebecca <laughs> will sometimes be like, what is this? <laughs> and that's really hard for me. So I, I, yeah. I, you'll notice I did not play in the sum shot. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those reasons is because I was like, let's not, let's let, <laughs> yeah, let's not the, test this. <laughs> for the initial run. Um, 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 but there was another question yeah. about sharing the, the, the characters with the, and the journey with, um, the world, I think, right? That was the second half of that question from Priya. I thought it was like sharing you with mm-hmm. uh, I think it was that, yeah. Was it, uh, okay, then maybe I misunderstood. You is, it hard, is it hard to share your partner with this group and fans are mostly gratifying to see their awesomeness appreciated? Gotcha, okay, okay. So, then, no, I'm good. Then never mind, I'll never tell you what I was gonna say. <laughs> being in a show with me and great. sharing you it's with the great. world. That's why the show exists, is because <laughs> I was like, I want you to have more opportunities to perform because you're so great. And also for me, obviously. <laughs> Guys, love wins. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Always. It's uh, a good thing. I'm gonna transition a little bit. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna put uh, you, Rebecca, in the hot seat for Ooh. a second for a couple questions from me for a second. <gasps> Chris, you're gonna ask me questions? I'm gonna ask you questions. Good, yeah. Oh my gosh. Tell so, me. hold on. Yes. Uh, what is your biggest challenge as playing or Rebecca? I'm not gonna actually call you Oma. Yeah, thank you, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey. Uh, what is the biggest challenge of playing a kid, or is it just more fun to be a little snarky? Um, it's a ton of fun. I have a great time playing a child. Um, I I worry sometimes, like when I first started playing Oma, I worried that um, I wouldn't have the childlike wonder, or like I wouldn't have. I, I would feel like I was like too metagamey or too like solving problems in an adult mm-hmm. way. Um, and I do sometimes still feel myself like, oh, is my intelligence with wisdom? Is my, like, how am I putting too much of this in there? Um, like, would I be able to solve these problems um, as a child? But also it's a fantasy world and Elbor is a fantasy world and kids grow up fast. Um, so so we had a conversation pretty early on in like James's fisherman's house over dinner where we kind of discussed like, well, what be, what makes an, what makes uh, an adult? Like what makes, what is the transition from childhood to adulthood? And is it just having to make adult decisions? And if that's the case, then Alma yeah, I, that, I, that was a moment where I was like, oh, <laughs> like yeah. I never thought of that. But you're like, I had to make decisions that only an adult would have to yeah. make. So like I grew up like, yeah. Um, but I do love playing. Like, I feel like a lot of Oma has a lot of my id, like a lot of my like mm. am- impulsiveness and aggressiveness and and like my um, uh, kind of like the, the act before you think this, like mm. all of that, that mm. I inherently do have. Like, I feel like I get to throw all of that in this. Um, we had a nice comment like really early on when we started that said like, oh, Rebecca must have like children or she must like spend a lot of time around kids because she's um, got like a, she's like got my teenagers down, you know? And I, and I felt really like, that was a very kind mm. statement. I don't mm-hmm. have children and I, but I do like, I do spend a lot of time around kids and I was a teacher for a while. So I think that's kind of, all all in there all yeah, in there that lived experience. Yeah, I didn't know that about you yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i think it's interesting too because seth gave you a very good kind of dynamic to play with with now fame of yeah. like also a person who had to grow up really really fast yeah. and showing an opposite side of that of yeah. like clinging to the thing that protects you and clinging to the thing yeah. that like makes you a child mm-hmm. yeah. in peppermint yeah. and then losing it when mm-hmm. they lost them but also like very much understanding, like, oh, I have to kill if I'm going to survive. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, do you think Oma gets how important she is? No. <laughs> yeah. No, of course not. Oma doesn't get it. Like, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I think at one point when she, when the poem came about and it was like the she wolf, and I was like, do you think that's me? And then I was like, nah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then they're all being like, yeah, that's definitely over. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I should know. She doesn't know. Well. Has no idea. Incredible. Yeah. Do you think when she gets older, like, she'll start to get it? And, like, how do you think her magic and her kind of affinity 
for kind of bringing chaos into the world is going to develop? Like, where do you, where do you see that kind of going? Yeah, I don't know because we're now level thirteen. Yeah, and the things that she can do are pretty intense. Um, so she's more powerful than most beings. Yeah, <laughs> and she's, I don't and she's a teenager. But she spent a lot of time around, like in the. She spent the first ten years of her life in the monastery around people who mm -hmm. were also incredibly right. ad adept at what they were doing. So I don't think she knows mm -hmm. uh, how different she is from a townsperson because she hasn't spent a lot of time around them. Mm -hmm. So she basically went from the monastery to Xavier, who is an incredibly powerful wizard, yeah. to um, March and the team of like kind of like bandits basically mm. and thieves and assassins and and they were all very like for her level were very everybody's capable, capable. That she's been around yeah. yeah so she hasn't really been around like joe schmo and the james and his fisherman crew like she's just not really spent a lot of time uh, so she i think she honestly just like many kids assumes that everyone is at, is at her level right <laughs> And that's only going to get worse because now she's got a ton of money and a house and a butler. <laughs> like, just like classic Nepo baby stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's like the, oh, she, I never so thought she about that. Yeah, she I, I keep Nepo thinking baby. about how yeah, privileged she is. Yeah. Alma is so privileged. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't get it. She like, does she not does not it. see her privilege. She does not. Yeah. Um, but not also in the sense of like, I, I think this has come up a little bit though, too, where it's like Flynn has been like, well, I have to work so hard to learn my magic and I just don't know if it's worth it. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't work hard for my magic but like also my parents are dead yeah. so like <laughs> yeah. so what's the what's the like, exchange rate here you know you're really like you're trying to like prove yourself and everything but your parents are really happy and, and you they, had a childhood and you had a, <laughs> and you had a really whole good childhood, childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to like decide to go join the iron light like almost never had a choice in no, anything that's no, ever happened in her not, life yeah, like yeah, literally yeah. every step in her life has never been like a, a choice that she's made so so she just feels like... except for her sheer will i feel <laughs> yeah. like she is like a bullet going like yeah. penetrating forward yeah yeah, yeah there is that <laughs> well when you're the child of destiny purpose is hoisted upon you. Mm -hmm. True I, think, I do think it's a fun dynamic, though, the difference between her and Flynn. Mm. Because I feel like Flynn wants so so badly to be the chosen one, <laughs> but he's not. Right. And Alma is the chosen one and, like, does not, like, does not care, <laughs> does not realize, does not have anything tied to that. Mm -hmm. And it's a really interesting power dynamic. I agree. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, speaking of power dynamics, we're going to shift that over to Kelly, oh, Mr. Shane McLaughlin himself. <laughs> O'Loughlin? Is it McLaughlin? It's uh, O'Loughlin. It's a uh, potato McWhiskey. Hey. It's, uh, it's the Sometimes when you're on a talk show, you feel confident about someone's name and you fuck it up. <laughs> Wait, did you just sincerely call <laughs> yeah. me Shane McLaughlin? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Irish names. I've known you for like... <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you work at a job all day and you have a bunch of names in front of you mm. and you... Look. Screw it up. Look, you know Irish names. It's... Saul Kelly. <laughs> As a grave domain cleric, uh. you don't really seem to deem with death very well. <laughs> you spared people, you've always tried to negotiate. Uh -huh. How does that impact your morality? <laughs> and I will drop this. Good, thank you. <laughs> God bless me. Uh, O'Loughlin. 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 Yes, yeah. I'm sorry, Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never forgive me. It's all right. <laughs> they will hold that against you. Um, uh, uh, hair. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Scottish, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Shane? Man, dealing with death, he doesn't do it, what was it? He doesn't deal with death well uh, for being a grave cleric. And what was the second half? You spared people, you always try to negotiate. How does mm -hmm. that impact your morality? Oh, yeah. Um, so I will say, I do think Kellogg actually does deal with death well. Uh, uh, in terms of his ability to process it and to face it. Mm -hmm. um, but he has a, a, a moral obligation to prevent it uh, to the extent of his ability. Um, mm. the, the principles of Vermeer are the sun, the moon, and the stars. Generosity, flexion, and equality. And so to adhere to those principles, all beings, no matter what level they are, how much HP they have, uh, I, are equal in value and Kellogg mm -hmm. needs to keep them alive mm -hmm. um, as, as well as he can. Like he also understands that he has limitations. He, I mean, he sort of barely understands that. <laughs> like he believes that he can do anything. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but that's the, that's the element of it where it's like, he's always going to try to prevent it because that's his thing. That's yeah. his whole fixation. 
that is a well-rounded answer that I can't come up with a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like it was sincere. I know, <laughs> weird. <laughs> I don't know how to be sincere with people. <laughs> uh, but talking about... Your answer has revealed to me an inner flaw. <laughs> I am flawed. <laughs> Are there any particular rituals or practices your character engages in as part of their faith? Um, there, are, the the main thing is the cleanliness. Uh, that that's like a, a one of the principles that uh, I like the I like playing with this in terms of the lore of the universe. Is like there's these gods. They're not the best communicators, right? So the way that the, their followers have interpreted this is like we want everything to be reflective. So it's always being polished. It's always being kept tidy and clean. Um, Kellogg is not the best at that. <laughs> that is not the part of it that he uh, has always done well at. It's important to him, but it usually falls by the wayside. And of course, as the campaign began, it was completely thrown out as a thing. Mm -hmm. his, his necklace was all warped and destroyed because he stops taking care of it. Right. Ooh. So yeah. So he sort of is like kind of getting back to that now. But yeah, that's that's not. Mm. Thank you. Cleanliness is next to godliness. True that. It's true. Uh, does Kallik believe in an afterlife? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you subscribe, uh, where's my camera? Which one's? Which one? Where's my where's camera? camera? <laughs> <laughs> if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can watch our session zero, uh, where, where uh, Zachriel uh, gave Kellick a vision of the afterlife that oh. he had. It's the it's the it's the it's the afterlife that Zachriel has basically or that you know, he's able to send beings to um and he sort of gave me a tour in a very uh kind of uh confrontational kind of way <laughs> yeah uh uh and that has heavily influenced my decision making across the campaign because like kellick has seen the afterlife mm -hmm. and so he's like i'm gonna send beings to this like even if there are things we kill mm -hmm. i'm gonna burn their bodies because I know that it's a peaceful existence. I know Aww. that it's okay. Like that's he has a surety of like this does take yeah. care of the dead. So yeah, yeah. A great follow up question from Fable C twenty: Is that afterlife a dream? A dream? Uh, potentially. I mean, you know, you never know what the gods are doing to your brain. But he saw it with his own eyes to his, his own understanding. So uh, yeah. So I mean, what is that's kind of a philosophical question right it's like we are all are we are we in a simulation or yeah, not yeah i think right? therefore i like am might as well <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's trusting his his sensory uh yeah. input <laughs> yeah. yeah uh with that sensory input uh, it's interesting because you both have this kind of very unique way of casting your spells or mm -hmm. like having those class actions mm. i asked this in the first venture friends you can check that out now on youtube.com slash venture for dnd uh <laughs> Hey, I don't get your name plug, right, plug, but plug, I can plug, 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 plug. Way more important. Than that. <laughs> that was expertly done. <laughs> hey. Jealous. Thanks, God. <laughs> Anytime, my son. Uh, Oma, how does the combination of monk and sorcerer impact your character's abilities and play style? Oh, so much. I I love it. Well, and like mechanically, I love it, and then. RP, I love it also. So, like, mechanically, how rad is it to, like, have a boosted AC as a sorcerer? Mm. Very cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. Very cool, cool, mechanically. It's a good, it's a, cohesive it's multi-class. It's a nice multi-class, <laughs> you know? And, and also, as a sorcerer, how cool is it to bonus action dodge? So cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. Or this to, like, great. run Let's really go. fast. Or to, like, you know, it's like... Or to um, disengage. Like, I don't know. It's, it's cool. And I don't have a ton of... So or monk, key points. monk key yeah. points, but like it's very cool when I do have them because I am still the squishiest member of the team, and so I do still want to get away from taking too many hits. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's very cool mechanically. That it is a very cohesive multi class, and I really really enjoy it. Um, and then RP wise, like it was never I never chose it for the mechanics because I'm not a very smart, crunchy player. <laughs> 
The only thing you don't really care about it. I don't really care about it. You're very smart. You just don't really care about it. It was not, I wasn't like, oh, if I do this, it'll be really cool for this. It was more like, oh my gosh, did you know I get to use my wisdom as my in my AC? Like, it was like a surprise to me. <laughs> um, but for all my, it was always like, oh, RP wise, I love the idea of her growing up in a monastery. And so therefore she has some training in it. And I actually, when I leveled up, I took my one level in sorcerer and then immediately took my two levels in monk because I wanted to make sure that like I could punch basically right mm. away um because it was important to like as part of her character that like she can throw a punch and she's limber and she's like got all of those things as part of her mm. um and, and in a sense like I before Seeker came on I did have to fill in that role of like pseudo rogue right so it ended up being like really kind of like cool to have mm. um did that answer the question? I, I think it does. It's always felt true to character, too, that, like, Oma's a kid, so she's really springy. So it kind of, yeah. like, mechanically works yeah. with that as well, that, like, yeah. yeah, if she falls over, like, she can just get back up. Like, that's, like... Yeah, it's like, like the, the, you don't have as many aches and pains as, uh, when you're that age, right. right? It's like you fall and you're, like... Kids are all yeah, level like one rubber. monks. Yeah, they're yeah. rubber, they're rubber, right? So... Yeah. You don't have pain in your knees. You no can pain. get back up. You don't make any noises when you stand up. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> or sit down. <laughs> But like fresh knees, we're gonna go to a brand new person to the show. Oh, uh, one Sir Rodness. Uh, <laughs> oh, I wonder who that is. Hmm, who could it be? So does Kellogg have a need for faith, or what's his relationship to that concept? Jeez, uh, a need for faith. What does that mean? A need for faith would be. I think everyone has a need for faith. You need something to believe in to get out of bed in the morning. But faith know? doesn't have to be religious. But right? I, exactly. Yeah. Like I think I think like I, I'm not a person of faith in my real life, but I believe in a lot mm -hmm. of things that motivate me. So yeah. in that way, yes. I think Kellogg doesn't necessarily know the difference between those things. Mm -hmm. Like that's something he's working on. <laughs> Is like, do I need it to have a name for it to be the thing that compels ah. me? Um, but but, yeah, but, but, so yeah, short answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I think that's a good way of kind of, I don't know, a little bit of a transition because you, uh, both of you, mm -hmm. uh, work with a lot of like inter-party dynamics of like, do you need that faith? Like there's another cleric in the party that you can kind of point to. Mm -hmm. There's another magic caster in the party that you can point mm -hmm. to. Um, how do you feel like your character is like, interact with the party and like a second secondary question of like who is your favorite to interact with and it necess doesn't necessarily be like the person themselves but it could be the character mm -hmm. yeah i think it it does i think there is complexity to be said for um when multiple people fill in similar roles in a party oh yeah um i do think that is like real and i know we had to have a lot of conversations amongst ourselves, like, like about like, okay, well, how does my, um, magic manifest differently than your magic? Mm -hmm. Or like, how does my connection to gods manifest differently than your connection to gods? Um, so I know, like, I don't want to speak for Shane, but I know I had conversations with Ethan and Russell to be like, well, how, okay. So if you're going to start taking levels in wizard, like, how are we going to balance this to make it feel right? Um, and feel different. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the game side of it, like who I who I enjoy RPing with, I think I like RPing with everybody for different reasons. Like it's mm. complete. Like I enjoy RPing with everybody. Mm. You know, it's like I love the sibling dynamic of Alma and Flynn. I love like the antagonistic energy that they have. Um, and I feel like Russell like enjoys like we have a good time. Yeah, you guys have that a, a repartee. Yeah. Yeah, and and I enjoy like surprising seeker like I, I enjoy getting getting to say something to him and having him like be like oh man fuck like <laughs> like I feel like Oma often gets to say stuff to seeker yeah, and he's like yeah. shit I have thought of it like yeah, that and yeah. he and, and Rodney is such a fun improver to like he's enjoying... he lets it go there like he, yeah. he doesn't just be like yeah yeah I know that I know that he, he lets it sit in of like a fuck man I'll never why forget why do you say things like that when like, we added like... Rodney to the show Ethan, Ethan and I were talking about like how excited we were and he was like he's the embodiment of yes and like, yeah. he, like as a person like if you yeah. just have a conversation with Rodney he's yes anding you the whole time like yeah. there's no yeah it's he's a beautiful person yeah, yeah. and I enjoy RPing with Thessaly because Thessaly is so like gentle with Alma. Mm -hmm. Like, she's so sweet with Alma, and that energy isn't really anywhere else in the 
um, in the party because Kelly gets like we have great energy, but it's not but, yeah. it's not gentle. It's in not the same no. Way. It's, it's well, not there's like, some gentleness, is, but 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 it's it's familial gentle, not like pure gentle. Yeah, like Thessaly does treat Oma like a peer. I don't think that's true. That's true. <laughs> I also but, like, she's little, always like patting like, you on the like, head, like, like, sister, <laughs> like yeah. a little sister, but yeah. it doesn't feel like like a mother. You know, really? Thessaly, not to me. She reads as maternal to me. She reads as, like, big sister to me. But that's because March read as, like, March was very much, like, a maternal sure. figure. Well, I think you have a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of both sides. I think I like, like, I love part, I, like, I think you're going to say a little bit about this, but, like, I, I have a great time with our, like, the dynamic we've developed where the, the Abbott and Costello yeah who's, who's like slash the Batman slash Robin. Batman and Robin <laughs> somewhere between those yeah. those poles <laughs> um, where they're oftentimes like off in the corner trying to like solve a problem or or like um, she'll ask a question and she's always asking like she'll ask these like really like irreverent questions and, and Kelly will try to give her like a really sincere answer <laughs> and she just ignores all of it um, and, and that happens regu- like it's a it's a yeah. reoccurring bit and it's a really fun it's yeah, a really it's fun time. Fun. It's very fun. Like it just happened with the dragon, like yeah. with cinnamon, and it was like such a great. Like he's trying to explain that cinnamon, like the dragons, like have that they're intelligent creatures, <laughs> and that they have names. Worthy and, like, of your respect. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like whatever. Cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the first half of the question? Gosh, <laughs> my brain. Uh, uh, it was about what was it? Sorry. Basically, like how you synergize with other people, and then leading into uh, who, yeah, who like there's your... another cleric. On oh, there's I was just gonna cleric. speak to that. Yeah, that um, yeah, early on, like I remember, like one of the early episodes um, uh, with uh, Thessaly and and Seeker, uh, uh, we had a, a chat afterward about like, okay, so like where do we all fit in in this scheme? Because mm-hmm. everybody's got some healing stuff, and like, how do we? And like Thessaly's uh, magic has this like. Uh, what's the word? Ethereal, evanescent, like star lit quality to it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, up until they joined, I had a monopoly on light as a like thing, you know, because I like, and I was like, oh, I have to readdress and sort of like find a niche so that these expressions, these character expressions, mm-hmm. can can be different yeah. in the in the world of the play, mm-hmm. uh, uh, as I like to think of it. Um, and so we had a really productive conversation about that. And it's like, and that's just something that we do all, uh, frequently. Is like is like address those little things, um, whether it's just like a quick message or a full chat, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean. I love our pain with Devin. It's super fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's super, super fun. Like, it's fun to watch them RP. I also, it like, is. there are, there have been episodes where, like, Devin and I are on a tear and I have to be like, okay, DM, like, let's get out of here because, like, we could just keep going because, like, it, yeah, there's something about uh, me and Devin and also the lenses of Kellick and Thessaly where they could just, like, fight slash flirt slash chat for eternity like there's just infinite amount of like because they love to challenge each other but they both have like this really strong uh like core this moral Mm -hmm. core uh and they have and they're both like extremely skeptical in certain ways but like kind of uh blindsided in other ways Mm -hmm. um yeah so it's it's super duper and super fun i love doing that I think it's also really cool that like your character is a combination of your conviction and your history Hmm. like your wanting to be a fatherly figure to Alma is based off of a failure. Yeah. Thessaly wanting to be a big sister, a mother, what have you, is because, as we recently found out, they lost all of their family yeah. and recently regained it. And yeah. what a earth-shattering moment from last episode <laughs> to have that come in. And <laughs> my gosh. But weaving that into our next yeah. question, uh-huh, uh-huh. talking about NPCs and what they mean to us, you guys are 13th to 14th level. Mm. You are powerful. Mm. There aren't a lot of people in Elbor that can screw with you. Mm. Is that going to change how you interact with people? I mean, you guys did defeat a steel predator on your own, and that's supposed to defend the queen. Mm. So, like, how does that like percolate in your See, when you word, Flynn, when, we're a threat. <laughs> when you word it like that, it seems like we were doing really good in that fight. <laughs> you I were. did not feel like I was doing very good in that fight. Tactically, <laughs> you were doing great. We did um, our damn You guys just went a couple episodes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, no, I, I, it's it's I, we talk about this um we talked about this a lot actually because of like some of the bigger fights that we've had mm-hmm. recently mm-hmm. where uh, Sure, there are like not so many people that we that can 
defeat us in one one v one. Like, right. not no one's gonna be like one v one me, bro, because they'll lose. But, but that being said, there are combinations of people and like journeys. Like, I mean, we're about to take on like the Fatal Reserve, right? We just found yep. out what they're called. We just found out like that it's this like really scary crew from Caldor. None of us know mm. how what like what their team comp is, yeah. right? But it's like. That's incredibly scary. But they and sound super scary. They sound very scary. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> Thessaly is very scared of them, and she knows what I can do, so if she's yeah, scared of them... Yeah. <laughs> and we know what Thessaly can do, so and like, yeah. we know what yeah. Thessaly can do. So it's like, it is one of those things where um, Elbor feels, like, for at least for all mine, for me, like, Elbor feels very threatening. Um, because even if... It, it feels like there are so many powerful people on this planet. Um... Yeah. So, so I don't know. Like, I it, it it does not feel like there are that many people. Like, I don't feel like we can just like beat up a bunch of townspeople. Like, I. We've recently had this pivot where we were kind of like outside of everything. We yeah. were like skirting past the war. Yes. Skirting past like any major. Well, we would go into a major city and then we would immediately have to flee it. So like we were just not interacting with the the like mechanisms of the world in this in a like public way, yes. sort of. And so we've had this sort of, I don't know if it's a luxury or, or what have you, but uh, uh, we've existed in the margins. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't really been something that the, the agents of repair have had to think about, yeah. is like, what does our power mean for mm -hmm. the rest of the world until until more recently? And certainly like, that was part of the like argument with Pravel Kellick had it after the, the fight on Vendel Rise. Um, was just like, oh, there's this like, you know, the the more powerful Kelly yeah. becomes, the more he has to like we owe it take to care of the world, yeah. yeah, as a result. So well, and and in terms of like how it's gonna affect our interaction with NPCs, like we're not gonna go up like beat up NPCs because we want their property. You know? like, <laughs> we're, we're a pretty like oh, we're, we're good, we're very we're good very oriented, good oriented yeah, party. Yeah. So we're gonna treat all people with like the respect they deserve, regardless of like how much power they may or may not have, like. Yeah. 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 There are there are elements of it where it's like there is this war going on and like Kellick and Oma had that conversation back in uh, uh Nestle Valley, I think, or the other one. It was West Barry. West Barry. Mm -hmm. Uh where uh they were like, How do we end the war? Should we kill the gods? Like it was like one of those things where we were like <laughs> kinda just trying to, we were strategizing in character about like how what are the easiest ways to end the war. So that is something I think that that's where they're cognizant of their power and like well, okay, maybe we gotta, maybe we gotta go have a conversation with the rulers of Kaldor. You know, like <laughs> just a little talk. Hey, Kaldor, you wanna stop? <laughs> in China. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, now it's like we we know we have like a lich with an entire undead army, so yeah. it's like it doesn't. Yeah. I don't feel very powerful. I don't feel. Yeah, it's true. It's when I know real. my enemy is a lich with an entire undead army, right? Like that feels. Like Action <laughs> economy will get you. <laughs> It is interesting. Oh, we don't have a horde breaker here. You okay? do not. No. <laughs> it would be, would be kind of nice. Yeah. Now, Faye, uh, hurry up. <laughs> level up. Power game now, Faye. <laughs> you just shove him back in the Underdark. <laughs> <laughs> just come back in the <laughs> Dude, I can't wait till adult now Fane makes an appearance somewhere in the oh, yeah. years to follow. Oh, well, yeah. I love, okay, so Shane and I were talking about that a little bit. I, I'm going to talk to God for a second. Shane and I were talking about this for a little bit, and we were like, Nalfane is 100% drow, and Alma ages very slowly. So in theory, in 700 years, Nalfane and Alma will be like the only people left that like lived in this experience together. And like imagine these two friends, fighting. these two friends potentially, or like hopefully friends or enemies, or like what, like there's so many adventures that could happen, right? right. Where it's like these two very old people who a millennium from now are, mm. can just like chat and be like, man, I remember like I when Kelly there. did this thing yeah. or like, gosh, like I miss, like here's how it lets, like us reminiscing because they can both live for so long. Yeah, so and I mean, when, when the, the uh, interesting part about that is of course the sort of seeking of mutual companionship through shared experience of yeah. Nathan and Oma, like who else would they go to? Like you were there for right. so much You were there this. and we were both children. Yeah. Talk to anybody else that would understand. Aww. That's really interesting. It's <laughs> really interesting. It is kind of fun too to think about like as you get higher level, as we've seen yeah. in Elbor, the higher level you go, the more obscure you are. Like sure. think, I'm thinking like Hayfree, Artemisia, Xavier. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's sort of the three. They're kind of just like I don't want to deal with this. Right. Yeah. 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 You have the power to be above it. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, nobody's gonna like the war doesn't affect you nobody's because you can just you. you Hayfree just lives in his little void. Yeah. Like it's like no at the war, Caldor. 
Um, yeah, I mean, Hayfried quit yeah, well, the Order of the Red Wolf, yeah. and like nobody's coming after him about mm. it because yeah. you know I, he's got a rep, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. Uh, no. I mean, we got a lot of unresolved stuff with Hayfried. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I mean, how how full is that boy going to get? I wonder by the end oh, of this campaign. Even, we've got a lot of people in prison, and I haven't dealt yeah. with that. We have not dealt with Look, that he's yet. He's got a bunch of stone statues in there we got to work on. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I want to figure out how to save them. Yeah. Oh, Maybe geez. that's why time doesn't move, and Avery's boy just like, I got time to think about it. Why not? <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. Jeez. got to find a basilisk. You really got to find a basilisk. That's the fact. Uh, Oisk. But like a heart turning to stone being unpetrified. <laughs> Kellick. <laughs> I got to ask Shane cuz you're here. We had Devin on the last episode. Sure, yeah, yeah. How did this relationship start? Where did the flirting begin? Like what was the moment oh, you're like, you know? "Hey girl, I, I so it's funny cuz like it snuck up on me." Yeah. Oh, right? Okay. Like it was like a thing like almost in me. I think in the very first episode of Thessaly's in, we turned the sheep demon in back into a sheep. Right. And um Yeah. Uh 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 Kelly like, faints from the effort, and like I had to roll to see if I was gonna fall into the void or not. Uh, and uh, Thessaly immediately went over and did lay on yeah. hands. And I remember like the moment of it visually of like Kelly like, waking up to this person he just met who like saved him in a way that he has never been like he's always the person yeah. on the other end of that mm-hmm. conversation always like being the one who like you wake up to to be like hey you doing okay like uh-huh. and there and I literally in the description I was like oh I blush. And it was like, and that, even then I didn't really acknowledge it, that that was like a thing. But ever since then, it kind of like started to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Blossom. Blossom, Blossom. sure. Also, Also, I will say like, I think Shane really loves romance in oh, yeah. fantasy stories and in oh, storytelling. Yeah. And Devin really loves romance in mm-hmm. storytelling. So it's mm-hmm. like, it, it, it kind of like, Devin is more open to like, um, I think Devin is very sensitive to the potential of romance in a, in, in, and you are too mm-hmm. in a way that like Flynn like Russell myself and maybe even Rodney aren't as like sensitive to it to be like oh that's like, a oh, that kind yeah, of that that's spicy, spicy energy to it yeah. like, I, I was never like oh yeah Brim and Seeker I see the spice but Devin was the one who was like oh I, I clocked that right, right. In, and in a way that like Rodney didn't even clock you mm-hmm, know and yeah. so it was like it was I, I think your guys' sensitivity to it allows mm. it to blossom for sure um, in a in a really special way. Well, it was just like when the when we did the, when we had tea in the the oh, cave after the the, the mountain tea. fight. Yeah, well, that wasn't rose oh, tea. Wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. It was after the nightmare. Mm-hmm. After she had that nightmare, uh, it, it, that was like we hadn't acknowledged any of the like flirtation stuff until that like that episode happened. I was like. Damn! Like, I was like that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I remember the conversation. Like it felt like I was asking Devin out the way I had to be like, "Hey, can we talk about?" <laughs> you know, like it was like the most like middle school I felt in my in the very since middle school, yeah. where I was just like, "Do you want to talk about whether Kelly and Thessaly should have a relationship? Like, is that something you?" Because like, yeah, obviously I wanted to make sure it was cool before yeah. I did any further storytelling in that direction. You are gonna lose your mind. <laughs> In like the next like five episodes or less, like you will absolutely lose your mind in five episodes or less. Lose your mind. So I mean, not to like play your hand. Not to you guys should you guys should watch. <laughs> yeah, I I and I will echo Fables D 20s sentiment. In game romance is very good is very good. It is a good sign that your friends IRL and a great thing that yeah. you've been mentioning throughout this whole thing is constant communication oh, yeah. and check-ins, which is very important. Yeah. Number so number one yeah. part of yes. it, it, what's funny is it's like it's the number one part of playing D D is mm-hmm. keeping up in communication. But it's also like the number one part of any relationship. Yes. It's like you just communicate, be as direct as you can, be as honest as you can, and you know. Um, and get out of situations that are toxic. There, there is a lot of in this in this podcast specifically that is like, which doesn't really get a lot in other D and D shows where it's like, we just fought this, you know, horde of orcs, and it's like, how do you feel about that? Are you good? Are you good? Is it okay? 
like my favorite episodes with you guys are just like we're going back we're going back to see keeper and we're gonna make stew and it's gonna be fine <laughs> and we're just gonna decompress everything and we don't do that nearly enough no <laughs> <laughs> like, you got corbin amberstone to deal with oh my gosh it is it is you do feel like you're yeah. on a freaking slog i mean it yeah, was yeah. an entire year out of game yeah and in in game it was what like just the we spent an entire year all of 2023 was the ever that was the um the long, long eve. eve yeah so it was seven days and it was just like the longest seven days seven to ten, ten, ten it was ten days ten days, ten days. Ten days of darkness yeah. long ten, longest ten in-game days of my life yeah 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 not enough rest time <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we we really i mean that's what we aspire to is having those conversations making sure that yeah. the, the the everything is has weight to it the choices you make yeah. matter that the things that are happening to these characters uh, uh, something that I've always like thought, th I, th I think isolates it well, is uh, 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 our characters remember what happens. Yeah. Mm. Like they, they, uh, you know, no matter how many episodes in the future, we remember what happened, and it changes them. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, going off of that, in a kind of a, we'll, we're gonna flip the script a little bit. Uh, I asked this of Rodney and Devin last time. Has there ever been a situation where your character? Uh, based on the way that you played them, mm -hmm. will agree with a decision that another character makes, but you as a person is like, no, but you have to like have that cognitive dissonance of like, I'm gonna agree in this moment and be this person because this is who my character is. Almost never. Almost never, <laughs> well. Oma does not agree with things like ever. Megan <laughs> and Oma are just two sides of the same coin. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think, I like to think that I play I'm pretty like open and honest with how I play the game. And like, yeah. I I like to think that like, I am trying to make the choices that make sense for my character, but also the, that makes sense for the story. And so I, I try to live in this world where my character doesn't want things that are super antithetical to the party. And so I try to make yeah. it that if there's anything that I don't agree with, I have to make myself agree with it. Mm -hmm. Or if I really don't agree with it, then I will put my foot down and allow other people to be the final say. Like we're not always 100% um, I think saving the family and the uh, outside of Kaldor Oof. in Kaldor was probably like the f biggest example of this oh, in my man. mind. Oma did not want to go through the under through the pass in the in the in the caves, but she was outvoted, and so it's like she never at any point in time said, "Fine, let's do that." Like, uh, yeah, I want to do that because the party wants <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, she's praying about it. The whole I was like, time. <laughs> I, I made it, but I also like allowed it to happen right I, I i i didn't say i i, I didn't in the in game you didn't I take any in-game actions to i didn't take in-game actions happening. to prevent it from happening yeah. i didn't I, and and so i guess in that sense like is that what you mean by allowing things to happen that you don't want to happen yes mm -hmm. because in that sense it's like i don't think i i don't think i had to like allow say yes to the moment like i i said yes to the moment in the improv sense but i kept true to my character in the sense of like my character didn't want to do that yeah but do it in a way that's not so hostile that you're not also saying yes to the yeah. to the premise yeah for me it's kind of the opposite i i'm a much more accommodating person than kellick is yeah. and like that was part of like that's part of the joy of playing kellick is he's like no nah, i don't want to do that or like i'm i'm or i'm like i believe this and therefore i will enforce this yeah. right like whereas i have very strong convictions but i'm also like i just want to be nice to be around you yeah. know like where kellick doesn't he's not really preoccupied with that he's he's okay if people think he's a curmudgeon or, or whatever mm -hmm. um and so like there's things like you know the the two most like present examples are like flynn's pact where like kellick is obviously vehemently against that mm -hmm. but i'm not yeah. I, you know and and there is a part of it that is like uh i also i'm it's kind of stressful because I really want to make sure none of my RP is like interfering with like Russ playing a warlock. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, he, that's a, a game mechanic and he should be able to play that yeah. without feeling bad about it or anything like that. And so it's like something I try to continue to talk to him about and make sure we're cool. And like, I'm glad we sort of were able to have a confrontation in character about it so that it feels a little more resolved. Um, because there's a tension to that. Same thing with like Thessaly's uh, uh, an Oath of Vengeance Paladin, which mm -hmm. obviously Kellogg is not super hype about vengeance, but there's like, I ha I, there's a line to walk there. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I am reminded of a recent moment from one of the past episodes where that extended beyond the veil of you as characters and players, but also to the DM where the rules is written, I believe it was for Chaos Burst or 
A, anyway. a twin spell of some A sort? twin spell, yes. Where it was, hey, there's this thing that like, eh, shouldn't be thing. But in the moment, Seth's like, hey, I'm gonna let it go. And we're gonna figure this out later because in the moment I care more about us telling a story together yeah. than what it says on the page. And I think a lot of that is, cause you could have sat there for about 15 minutes and being like, well, in this thing, and Jeremy Crawford says it over here and over blah, yeah. blah, blah. Nah. And it's, it's fun and it's better in my opinion to just kind of go with your gut and go like, hey, I don't like this, but we're gonna go forward with it because I care about the story right now and right here. Yeah, I mean, I think there are moments, especially in combat, where Seth will make a call on something and I might be like, nah, I don't like that call, but I try it. Well, like our, one of our tenants is like, trust the DM and like, like what and they say and, like, and, and accept their ruling. Yeah, like, yeah. So, yeah. And so, like, we try, and I think that's really important. It's like, as long as the faith is not broken between the party, like, at the table, you have to be so, je like, careful about not breaking the trust. Trust yeah. is, like, trust yeah, is everything. everything. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Seth has not broken our trust. Like, he has never given us a situation that we could not find our way out of. Or, yeah, or, or yeah, where his ruling was, like, he was, he's never more been like, out of spite. Yeah, than he's never been, like, spiteful thing. or yeah. cruel in yeah. any way to, like, be like, this is unwinnable and I'm just gonna like, ha ha ha. Like, right. I think there are a lot of DMs who are like, I'm a hard DM and like, I, and it's like, are you or are you just an asshole? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I've met those DMs, I've played for those DMs. Yeah, fun. yeah, and it's like, are you or are you just like an asshole about it? Right. So it's like, it, it, and I don't feel like, like that's, so sure, at that table, you cannot trust your DM. You right. cannot like, it's hard to say yes to the DM when they're, when they're like that, but we, it's always been important to us that that's never broken and then that we can trust. It's one of the ways that D&D &D is less of a game and more of a storytelling medium. And, yes. you know, Venture Forth, the, the great experiment that is Venture Forth is like, how far can we push that? And right. like, as like, this is storytelling with game, couched in game mechanics right. to give it weight, you know? Uh, and this, that means that the game mechanics are not as weighted as the storytelling. So like, what our goal is like, are we telling a good story? Then yeah. like, what, you know, who cares what the rules says yeah. about that, right? Like, so it's, yeah. I, I do want to peel back the veil a little bit and we can put that veil yeah. back on if you don't feel comfortable with it, but you mentioned <laughs> oh, tingles. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the veil's being pulled. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I feel naked without my veil. I need my veil. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned tenants of yeah. Venture Forth. Oh, yeah. Would you care to share any more of those? Because I know oh, that sure, like, yeah. people out there in the world, obviously you guys have a, a, a great game going on right now. Oh, yeah. And sharing yeah. those tenants could make a better game for everybody. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things that we did early on as like Venture Forth and like deciding that we were going to do this thing was we all sat down. Um, and originally it was, you know, uh, Russell... Shane, myself, and Ethan really building out the tenants mm. and discussing like like watching actual plays that we enjoy, um, finding what about them that we enjoy and how we can like rework that to make it some to make our table original and something that we really want to play at. Like what are our favorite parts of D and D and how can we bring those into our gameplay? And then what kind of like mechanics can we build around our table mm. to adhere to those rules so that we can keep everybody honest so yeah. that we don't become like a metagamer or like kind of well, like Well, it's crunchy. also like specifically, we were, we were talking about shows we liked, yeah. like actual play shows. And so it was like, what was appealing to us as audience members uh, first and foremost, because we were trying to build a show that was built for the audience, that was like not about our desires as players, yeah. but but literally, so there's something what, we would want to watch. We call them our rules as listened instead of as written, because yeah. originally it was an audio podcast. Yeah. Uh, 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 so now it could be R A W again, I guess. Rules is watched, but I, I, rules is listened sounds nice to me. Um, but yeah, it's it's effectively like how do you maintain a thing that is built to be consumed? Yeah. Um, by uh, hopefully an avid listener. So we have ten tenants. Uh, something like that. <laughs> I don't know them all. I don't know the uh, the number out there. Yeah, if you're on our Patreon, they're, uh, if they're you're up, on our Patreon, they're up there. They're yeah. You can download the PDF I made. It's a yeah. cute little poster. Uh, and, and you can print it. It's a very cute poster. It's we, we have, have it. Somewhere. We have it like framed in the yeah. bedroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, we also have a video I made on them where I go. Oh. I go. I isolate one them by one by one. Yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, it's like I, I can't remember how it's so. It, yeah, in the video, uh, but... some like to highlight a few. It's like yeah. trust the DM. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know um, say it's obviously like say yes to the moments. Yeah. you know um, the rules of improv like say yes to the moments. Mm -hmm. Don't meta game. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Make it part of your character. Like make it a character choice, not not a game yeah. mechanic choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
including like how you describe what's happening. Don't just be like, I cast fireball. Right. Yeah, talk about exactly what's happening. Yeah, they're all phrased kind of adorably. They be are. descriptive, be open, be yeah. generous, be trusting. Uh, and, you know, there's more. Stuff like that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's... Uh, one of my favorite ones is about that that yes and thing because it's also something that I never under for the longest time I did not understand as like an actor and improviser mm -hmm. is like yes and doesn't always mean agreeing to the literal premise or to the to the Worse. suggestion. Hey Chris, let's go jump off a cliff. You have to say yes. That's not actually what I, the the thing is. Is the what's the game? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, what's the what are, what's the game, we're, the playing? game we're playing? Is the game we're playing? that you don't want to jump off a cliff, and I really do, because then we can have a scene about that that's still full of yes and, but you're being like, no, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that. As long as you're agreeing to the game, right? Yeah. Where I'm like, come on, Chris, come on, come on, come on, you know, and we have we can actually do yeah. a whole thing. So it's like, I don't know, that's always been interesting to me. So. Yeah, find the game and say yes to the game. And that's kind of similar to like, me not wanting to go in the cave. Mm -hmm. And saying yes to the premise of being like, I understand why you want to do this, and saying yes to the moment. Yes, yeah, yeah. While yeah. your character might be saying, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where the the characters are so helpful because they allow you to explore it in a way that's still like agreeing with the overall mm -hmm. premise. Yeah. yeah. Tenants like rules are guidelines that which we follow to tell a good story. <laughs> they and are. like any story. It has an end. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a great time uh, in these next couple episodes. And thank you so much for joining the Adventure Friends. I think that's a great time where we can send it back. So as we always say here, bye nerds. Bye nerds! Bye nerds!